So we're going to investigate in this little video units of area and units of volume. And I've put on here three different shapes. I have a line here, I have a rectangle here, and I have a cube here. And let's just assume um, that each of these measurements are going to be in centimeters. So if I were to measure the length of a line, because there's only one dimension here, my final answer would have units of centimeters. Measuring the length of a line, units are, would be in centimeters. If we're measuring the area of a rectangle, you would need to know this measurement, the length and the width, and then you would multiply those two dimensions together, so our answer ends up being in centimeters squared because we have centimeters times centimeters, centimeters squared. And now if we're trying to find the volume of this cube, well we know that there'll be a length, and there'll be a width, and there'll be a height. And volume of a cube would be this dimension times this dimension times this dimension. So so many centimeters times so many centimeters times so many centimeters. And so the units that we would use for the measuring the volume of the cube would be centimeters cubed. So one dimension for the line, centimeters. Two dimensions for the uh, rectangle, centimeters squared. Three dimensions for the cube or other shapes of volume, uh, centimeters cubed. Let's say we have this problem. Convert 10,000 centimeters squared. So obviously we have some area because it's centimeters squared. Convert 10,000 centimeters squared squared. Here's what I see a lot of students commonly do. They say this, they say, well, I know there's 100 centimeters in a meter, and that's true. 100 centimeters is equal to 1 meter. So they say, well, if I'm going to convert then this to meters squared, I'll just divide by 100, and dividing that by 100 would give you 100 meters squared, so 10,000 centimeters squared equals 100 meters squared. But that's that's not correct. And I'll, I'll explain why here. Let's say, we'll just draw a square here. We'll try to make it squarish. Here's a square. So I know that the area of this, because I was told the area of the square is 10,000 centimeters squared. If I wanted to find the length and the width of this, all I would need to do is say, take the square root of 10,000 and you would get 100. So the length and the width of this square is 100 centimeters. Well, because 100 times 100 is 10,000. Now we can actually use this formula here because we now are, have units in linear measure. So this 100 centimeters equals 1 meter does not apply to centimeters squared and meters squared because that's two dimensions. This only has one dimension. So I can compare these now and I can say, okay, let's get another one in here. Let's assume those are the exact same squares there. So I can say, okay, 100 centimeters is actually 1 meter, and 100 centimeters over here is 1 meter. And so now, now that I have them in meters, what would 1 times 1 be? Well, 1 times 1 is 1. So 10,000 centimeters squared is the same thing as 1 meter squared. So when you have square units, because there's actually two different dimensions in there, you have to divide by 100 twice. So if you took 10,000 and you divided it by 100 and then divide by another 100, so that's like dividing by 10,000, we would get that 10,000 centimeters squared is the same thing as 1 meter squared. So just be careful with that. Yes, there's 100 centimeters in 1 meter, but that does not mean that 100 centimeter squared equals one meter squared. That's not correct. So the first thing you should do is convert the 10,000 centimeters squared to what the length and the width would be. Then you can convert the length and the width to meters and then go and find the area that way again. So we'll look at a few examples like that. So 
We've got to determine the area of a rectangle that is 1.4 meters by 2.1 meters. But we've got to give our answer in square centimeters. So they've given uh, us uh, units in meters. We've got to put it in square centimeters. It's always a good idea to draw a little diagram. So I'm going to do that there. And we'll label this 2.1 and this 1.4. And we have to find the area. But we've got to have it in square centimeters. Well, fortunately, they gave us the units already in uh, meters. So we actually have the linear measurement. So we know that 1 meter equals 100 centimeters. So I'm going to take each of these, I'm just going to draw another tri uh, rectangle here. Assume they're the same size. So I'm going to take the 2.1 meters and multiply it by 100 to get centimeters. So we'll call this the, let's call this the length and we'll call this the width. So over here in centimeters, we go 2.1 times 100 to get 210 centimeters. So 2.1 meters, 210 centimeters. And the width, it used to be 1.4 meters. We're going to multiply by 100 because we're converting to centimeters. So 140 centimeters will be our new width. And now, of course, the area of a rectangle is length times width. So we can get out the calculator. 210 times 140, 29,400 centimeters squared would be the area. So we made sure that we had our measurements uh, in linear measurements. So it was given to us that way, 1.4 meters and 2.1 meters. So we could easily convert them to centimeters. And now we could multiply to find the area. So let's say we know that the area of a square is 9 meters squared. What would be the area in square centimeters? So you could do this two ways. You could know that, well, if I've got 9 meters squared, if I'm going to convert that to centimeters, so we know that 1 meter is the same thing as 100 centimeters. Since these have square units, you need to take your 9 meters squared and multiply it by 100 twice. Because you have to convert one of the dimensions to centimeters, and then you have to convert the other dimension to centimeters. So 9 meters squared would need to be multiplied by 100 twice to convert the meters squared to centimeters squared. And so then you would have 90,000 centimeters squared. Or you could just look at your diagram and say, OK, I've got an area of 9 meters squared. So if I took the square root of 9, that must mean that each side is 3 meters. So 3 meters by 3 meters, because 3 times 3 is 9. And then if I'm going to convert 3 meters to centimeters, I need to multiply that by 100. So that's 300 centimeters. And I would need to do the same thing to this side, 300 centimeters. And so now the area of this would be 300 times 300 which is 90,000 centimeters squared. Same answer we had over there. So just, just a reminder again that when we're converting meters squared to centimeters squared, there's two dimensions in this case, so we need to convert both of them to centimeters before we multiply them. Say we're asked to find the area of a rectangle that is 15 centimeters by 62 centimeters, but we need to find this in square feet. So we've got some problems with some units here that we've got to convert. So I've just written over the side here that one foot, one linear foot is the same thing as 30.48 centimeters. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little diagram. So that helps me see what I'm doing here. And um, we know this would be then 62 centimeters and this 15 centimeters. And so 
this rectangle in square feet, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to convert each of these measurements here to feet. So I'm going to draw another one here. And I'm going to label these ones uh, in, in square feet. So first of all, I'm going to convert the 62 centimeters to feet. So I know that one foot is the same thing as 30.48 centimeters. That's my ratio here. So I have feet up top here. So I don't know how many feet 62 centimeters is. So one foot is to 30.48 centimeters. X feet, unknown amount, that's what we're trying to find out, is the same thing as 62. So I've set the ratio up. And as long as I have the same units in the numerator as I have in the denominator, I'll be able to solve for X. So I did feet over centimeters equals feet over centimeters. Now to isolate X, I simply need to multiply by 62. So 62 times 1 is 62 over 30.48. We'll get the calculator out again. 62 divided by 30. 0.48 is 2.034 it goes on and on and on here. Now I'm going to do some more work with this number so I want to leave quite a few decimals in here. I'm going to I'm going to go to the fourth decimal. So 2.0341 feet. So I've converted 62 centimeters and that makes makes sense cuz one foot is 30 centimeters, so this is going to be very close to two feet because I have 60, close to 60 centimeters here. And just estimating, if this side is 15 centimeters and one foot is supposed to be 30 centimeters, then I should have approximately a half a foot on this side. But let's work it out. So one is to 30.48 as x is to 15. So we'll multiply both sides by 15 to isolate x. So that's 15 times 1 divided by 30.48. 15 times 1 is 15, so 15 divided by 30.48. So 0 0.4921. 0 0.4921. And now I have my length and my width, and so I can easily find the area. Area is length times width, which will be 2.0341 times 0.4921. I've already got the 0.4921 in my calculator, so I'm just going to go times 2.0341. Wow, worked out to a pretty much exactly one square foot. So the area, the area of this rectangle in square feet would be one square foot. We got a small jewelry box that measures 10 centimeters by 5 centimeters by 4 centimeters. And we want to find the volume of this box in cubic inches. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw draw a little diagram here. And so this dimension we'll say is 10 centimeters by 5 centimeters by 4 centimeters. So we've got a little box to convert each of those measurements from centimeters to inches so that we can find the uh, volume of this box in cubic inches. So we'll draw another one over here so that we can label our inch measurements. So we need to convert, it's really just three questions here, converting each of these into inches.
and so one inch is about 2.54 centimeters. So let's do a bunch of converting here. One inch is to 2.54 centimeters and we want to figure out how many inches 10 centimeters are. Oops, we don't need to write the units. So one inch, 2.54 centimeters, x inches is to 10 centimeters. So to isolate x, we'll multiply everything by 10. So 10 divided by 2.54 is 3.94. I'm going to go to three decimal places here, 3.937. And now we need to convert 5 centimeters into inches. So 1 inch is the same thing as 2.5 centimeters, as x inches is the same thing as 5 centimeters. So multiplying both sides by 5, we would get 5 divided by 2.54, which is 1.969. 1 and then finally, we will convert the 4 centimeters. So 1 inch is to 2.54 centimeters, as x inches is to 4 centimeters. So this is a times by 4, and times by 4, we would get 4 divided by 2.54. Oops. And we get 1.575. Remember the little two tick marks are the little abbreviation for inches. So we've converted each linear measurement to inches. And now we can say that the volume is length times width times height for a box. So this would be 3.937 inches times 1.9 six nine inches times one point five seven five inches. I'm just gonna leave that one in there times one point nine six nine times three point nine three seven gives us now let's say we're gonna round to the nearest tenth of a foot, so twelve point two. Um, oops, not feet. Cubic inches. So we've determined the volume of this box. It is 12.2 cubic inches.